Welcome back to another FMA tutorial from fmatutorials.com and ADSR. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, do that at youtube.com forward slash ADSR Toots. So today is a quick tutorial on a Detroit house bass sound using FM8. I did a tutorial in Massive maybe about two or three weeks ago doing the same sound in, uh, in Massive. We got a bunch of requests to do this type of Detroit house bass, kind of chill bass sound. So here it is in FM8. So one more time, here's the sound. And let's just jump right into it. It's pretty easy to make. Um, it's not one of those really precise sounds in FM8 where you have to get like everything that I show you perfectly, you know, down to the operator amounts and all that stuff. Uh, it's pretty, there's a good amount of leeway and you can still get a very similar sound. So this is a new sound in, um, I mean, label this. So here's a new sound. That's the default sound in FM8. And I'm going to uh, turn down the drums a little and I'm going to kind of leave, leave this running for a good part of the tutorial just so you can hear how the sound progresses. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the master tab. And I'm going to make sure that it's on um, voices are on one, which it should be by default. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of digital to it, a little bit of digital quality, maybe around 25 to 30, anywhere in there should do it. And we can leave the portamento on at 30. And I like, I like if I kind of know that I'm doing a, a lead sound or bass sound, I kind of have some presets made in FM8. That's one of the cool things about it. The effects, you have all these uh, spaces, user spaces. So I have a effect template for this um, already made, and it's just called Detroit Bass, and we'll run through it. And I actually kind of zeroed out some of them, I like the peak and shell of EQ. I'll get to that later as we go. But right now there is a little bit of reverb on. And the time's at 23, the bright's at 50, treble's 50, so those just stay the same, and dry wet down to 33. And then I also put the psych delay on, and the time's at 4, we might bump that up a little bit, so 4 to 6. Make sure it's synced to your tempo. The feedback's at 3, stereo is up, detune's up a little, and that actually really helps for the sound, and then the dry wet, anywhere from 10 to 15 should do it. So now moving on to the uh, operators. This one uses a few operators. We're going to activate. Uh, we're going to activate D, E, F is already active, X, and Z. And now um, I'm going to dial in the the uh, FM matrix part first before I do the waveforms, just because that's kind of how I work when I'm recreating these sounds. So bear with me for a second. So for D, I'm going to have uh, I'm going to modulate into D, just around 16, and then I'm going to modulate D into E at about 30, 36. I'm also going to modulate that into F at about 39 or 40. I'm also going to modulate that E in the F right here at about 75, 77-ish. Anywhere in there should do it. And then let's take, let's get Z as the out, going to the And then I'm going to take this whole D section and route that in at around 72. We're going to take this and modulate to about 71 going into the X operator. And 77 right here. I did the, I did the F one wrong. I'm going to dial that back down to about 40. And I had it up at 70. That one, this is the one that needs to be seven in the 70s. So I have it at 77 right now. 
and then modulate this to about 30. Modulate F over into Z at just about, just a little bit, maybe between 5 and 10. I'm going to modulate F into Z at 100. I'm going to modulate X into Z at about 35, 30, probably between 35 and 40. should do it. So for operator D, we're going to grab the soft square. We're going to take that same waveform for operator E and then we're going to leave this on sign. And this and then key sync all three of those. And then we're going to grab the ratio and pitch it up on F to 1.5. I'm going to turn down the velocity of D just a little. And then we're going to take up the amp noise, the cutoff noise res resolution turned down. And then I turned up the saturation limit and the saturation asymmetry. So moving on to... Um, we'll, we'll come back to the Z cutoff if we need to. Let's move on to our envelopes. And for this, um, we obviously need to just start on D. I, ha I Just for the sake of brevity for this, I have a little um, envelope shape preset saved, but it's nothing too confusing. You can do this really simply going from a square like that. You just drag it down. And... You can hear how D operator D is kind of making the the way the way we modulate it. It's kind of making a buzz sound, which we want in the sound, but we don't want it too pronounced. So that's why this gets that shape. And then on operator E, gonna load up the same. And basically, if you're coming, if you're going from a square shape, you're just making a little bit longer decay, and uh, from your D shape that we made on that envelope. So with, um, with the operator F, we're going to do the same thing. So operator F and E, they look pretty similar. See, like I said, there's a good there's a good amount of leeway. With this. Like, I can drag it out to there, and when I probably made this sound earlier, it was shorter. But we're gonna drag it out to here for now. And now moving on to our X envelope, we need to do a couple things to this. So we're going to make sure the cutoff is up all the way at 100. The amp is up, and the reso we make it more close closer to 30. And then turn the velocity up so the amplitude's higher. And I'm going to take this, drag it down to make a pretty. Pretty steep curve there. Drag that little part out. And now going to our Z. Let's go to the operator Z. And then we have to do some similar things we just did to operator X. So let's cut off around 73-ish, 75. Any probably anywhere between 65 and 75, depending on how 
how present you want the sound. So I'm going to go around 68. <laughs> I'm turning the reso down to about 29. And then on mode, I'm going to go up to 7. And spread, let's turn that up to get a little bit of width to this to this filter, uh, to probably around 40. Anywhere around there should do it. Now, see, I said we might have to come back to uh, our, our Z uh, operator on the ops tab and just to dial in a little bit of the, how much reso is coming through and all that. Now, really, the last thing we have to do is get the envelope shape for this. So, as you can see, it's a similar thing. Here's the default shape it pretty much comes with, and I'm just dragging this into around 0.2. Um, and I'm not tempo syncing it for this. And then what we're actually going to do with this one, though, is we're going to just bump this out ever so slightly. So then there's a little bit of, uh, of an attack time on that. And now it's pretty much, the sound's pretty much there. Uh, going back to the effects, because we have the shelving and peak EQ. I'm going to add a little bit of a um, little bump on the high end. And then boosting these kind of mid, low mids and low mids and mid highs um, really helps kind of make that make it have that more of that housey Detroit sound and then coming back to the psych delay one of the reasons why it is one of my favorite uh, delays or effects in FM8 is it has the detune in stereo which really helps this type of sound kind of have more character so I'm going to turn up the drum loops again and we can hear the finished sound and that's it. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any uh, questions, comments, anything like that, post them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't gone over to fm8tutorials.com, there's a bunch of Great FM8 tutorials, presets, basically everything FM8. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.